dear students welcome back to a new mathematics session in today's session we shall discuss a new concept that is maxima and minima and also we'll discuss first derivative test and second derivative test and also we'll solve some problems from exercise 6.5 let's move on to the topic let's begin with maxima and minima consider the graph of a function and when you observe this graph it attains its maximum value somewhere around here because this is called the peak of the curve means when you consider the open interval a comma b whatever points you take between a and b means from the domain a comma b open interval a comma b whatever points you take the function sorry the function attains its maximum at this point means say the point c within the domain and the corresponding value of the function that we get from here that is called f of c so at the point c the function attains its maximum value because of that c is called the point of maxima and the corresponding value of the function f of c is called the maximum value once again within this open interval a b at the point c the function attains its maximum value because of that c is the point of maxima and the corresponding value of the function f of c is the maximum value so let's summarize it c is the point of maxima and f of c is the maximum value in general if you say f of c is greater than f of x means this is the function f of x and f of c is greater than f of x for every x element of a comma b every x element of a comma b means from the domain if you take any element among all those elements f of c will be greater all those uh, values f of c will be greater and x element of a comma b c is also an element of a comma b open interval a comma b then consider another graph so the graph goes like this and when we come here the graph or the function attains its minimum value somewhere around here as before we can consider open interval a comma b and from here a and from here b we can see and somewhere here the function attains its minimum value say uh, within the domain we can consider as c so at the point c the function attains its minimum value and because of that we can say c is the point of minima and the corresponding function value f of c is called the minimum value Okay. so when we summarize it c is called the point of minima with respect to this diagram okay c is point of minima and f of c is the minimum value when we generalize f of c will be lesser than f of x f of c is less than f of x means within this open interval a b any point if you take and find out the value of the function f of c will be smaller among all f of x x element of a comma b and c also belongs to a comma b here a function can have more than one maxima or minima so here in this both here the first case and also here the second case we have found only one maxima and one minima but a function can have more than one maxima or minima let's consider the graph of y is equal to sin x so here is their maxima and here is their maxima and here also maxima is there here also maxima is there and when we consider here minimum value is there and here also and here also so a function can have more than one maxima or minimum next we shall discuss the concept of local maxima and local minima as the word says local maxima means we are defining it locally and minimum also same thing we are defining it mean so locally so that is why it is called a local minima here in this concept what we are going to do is we will consider a small interval and in that interval there is a point in which on that particular point the value of the function is maximum while comparing it with the nearby points once again we will consider a small point sorry a small interval and that interval there is a point in which on that particular point the value of the function is maximum while comparing it with the nearby values see for example just we will consider 
uh, graph of a function, uh, simple graph I have taken and I am considering a small interval, means a local interval I am considering, see for example this, this is the interval I am taking and from here it starts and from here uh, to it reaches to here and within this uh, particular portion the value of the function is maximum at this point. So this is called the local maxima. Since we consider it locally, so we call it as local maxima. And in case of minimum also, I am considering a small interval here. This is a small interval I have taken. And it starts from here and it ends in at this point. And the value of the function is minimum at this point while comparing it with the nearby values. Nearby values means it starts from here and ends here. So this is the concept of local minima in simple language. So when we define it, consider the graph of a function. Here f of x we have taken, x is on x-axis, then the graph of the function goes this way. And here you can see all the peaks. This portion is called the peaks of the graph. Here also one more peak is there. And this portion is called the valleys. And all the peaks carries the maximum value of the function and all the va valleys carries the minimum value means here there is a there will be a maximum value here also there will be a maximum value and here this minimum and here also comes as minimum local minimum okay here also local maximum we can say here also there is one local maximum and here there will be one local minimum here also one local minimum and uh, just to define we are going to define it theoretically about the local maximum and local minimum so here is a critical point is there because at this point only the value of the function is changes means you can see the graph it moves it increases and at this point it started decreasing and when it comes here again it start increasing means this is another critical point and as we come here again it start decreasing after this point and this is one critical point and finally another critical point is here and I am considering a small uh, value or point h which is greater than or equal to 0 and taking a point which is very close to c1 and left of c1 that is c1 minus h and same way I am taking another point which is after c1 that is c1 plus h what is h? h is a very small quantity so c1 minus h and c1 plus h I have taken this is the local interval I have taken see we have explained here before starting the general explanation so when we consider c1 h, c1 minus h and c1 plus h within this range the value of the function is maximum at c1 so the value of the function is maximum at c1 so f of c1 is greater than f of x for a very x element of c1 minus h comma c1 plus h means f of c1 is greater than f of x among all the f of x values f of c1 will be greater x element of c1 minus h comma c1 plus h then c1 is called the local maxima and f of c1 is called local maxima c1 is called the local maxima and here the corresponding value on the y-axis is the function value that is f of c1 f of c1 is called local maximum remember this is maxima and here comes as maximum and same way only in case of minimum only thing is that instead of greater here less will come here if i take a small quantity h which is left of uh, c2 if i consider c2 minus h and the right of c2 if i take c2 plus h and here if you write f of c2 is greater sorry less than f of x for every x element of c2 minus h comma c2 plus h in case of local minima and here in, a, in this graph itself we can see here there will be a local maxima and here also there will be a local maxima and here there will be local minima and here also there is one minima. So among all the maximum values, among all the local maximas, which one is the highest that is called the absolute maximum. The greatest value of a function in its domain is called the absolute maximum. We will consider all the local maximum and among that which is the highest value that is called the absolute maximum same way the minimum value of a function in its domain is called absolute minimum so minimum value means we have to consider all the local minimas and among all local minimas which one which 
one is the lowest one that is the local sorry absolute minimum consider the graph of the function and here local maximum local minimum global minimum global maximum all marked so we are going to discuss about that now just here you can see here this portion at this point it carries the local maximum because the function attains its maximum locally here and here also there is a peak and at this point also the function attains its maximum value so this is also can be considered as a local maximum and among the two local maximums which one is the highest highest peak is this one so that is called the global maximum or as we discussed before it is also called absolute maximum so you can see here local maximums all we can consider and among all the local maximums which is the highest one highest value that is called the global maximum or absolute maximum same thing only in case of minimum also here there is a local minimum and here also there is a local minimum and because lo local minimum comes in valleys and here you can see among the minimum local minimum values which one is the lowest one lowest valley that is called the global minimum or we can call as we have discussed before it is the absolute minimum okay global minimum also can be called as absolute sorry global maximum can be called as absolute maximum and global minimum also can be called as absolute minimum next we shall discuss the first derivative test this is used to find out the local maxima and local minima here uh, the working rule i am going to discuss along with the working rule simultaneously we will solve a particular question also an example also we will discuss so that you will understand the concept clearly so working rule the first step is f dash x is equal to 0 means we have to equate the derivative with a 0 let's take an example so here we are asked to find out the points of local maxima and local minima of the function f given by x cube minus 3x plus 3. As per our working rule, first we have to equate the derivative with a 0. Let's find out the derivative. x cube derivative is 3x square minus 3 into derivative of x is 1. So 3x square minus 3. Equate with a 0, equal to 0. From these two, 3 we can take common. So 3 into x square minus 1 is equal to 0 x square minus 1 will be 0 then from here x square is equal to 1 x is equal to plus or minus 1 so we are having two values x is 1 or minus 1 these are our extreme points and step 2 what we are going to do is represent extreme points on a number line roughly you can draw a number line and just represent these two numbers step 3 see just we have drawn a number line and we have represented two points the same point i have taken after that what we have to do is we have to take there are three portions now in this number line this is the first portion second portion third portion means just before minus one between minus one and one after one so just before minus one we have to take a point and we have to find out f dash x the sign of f dash x whether it is positive or negative take some points if say minus two we can take minus two take and put it in f dash x f dash x is this one so put it in f dash x so we will be getting the final answer and we have to check whether it is positive or negative and in between minus 1 and plus 1 we have to take a point again the same thing we have to put that point in f dash x and check the answer whether it is positive or negative and after 1 we have to take a point the same process will repeat put that value in f dash x and check the answer whether it is positive or negative only we need to check the sign that's all so here we will do it practically minus 1 and 1 two points we have taken and just before minus 1 i am taking minus 2 see minus 2 if i take and substitute in this x square 3x square minus 3 i am just substituting that is 3 into minus 3 square minus 3 square is 9 minus 3 so 27 minus 3 24 24 clearly a positive number so f dash x is positive here and it in between minus 1 and 1 i am taking one point clearly 0 is in between minus 1 and 1 if i put a 0 here 3 into 0 square that means 0 minus 3 so f dash x i am getting as minus 3 means negative i am getting then after 1 i am taking maybe 2 i will take after 1 the next number 2 i can take so 3 into 
2 square. 2 square is again 9. 3 into 9 minus 3. Clearly it is positive. Means here it is positive and after minus 1 it becomes negative and from here after 1 again it becomes positive. Then step 4. We are going to write by using this result identification. So here in any extreme point f dash x is changing from positive to negative. Left side positive and right side is negative. Any f dash, f dash x is changing from positive to negative. Then that extreme point is the point of maxima. You can see here f dash x is changing from positive to negative means up to this point it is positive and just after that point onwards it is negative. So that means this minus 1 is the point of maxima. In any extreme point f dash x is changing from negative means left side negative to positive right side then the extreme point is the point of minima. From this statement itself the conclusion is quite clear. F dash x is changing from negative to positive. Negative is smaller value and from smaller value it is moving towards bigger value. Then that extreme point is the point of minima. You can see here 1. Left side is negative. From negative after reaching this point it is changing to positive. So in some cases F dash x will not change plus or minus plus to minus or minus to plus. F dash x will not change in extreme points. That extreme point is called point of inflection. So here also plus, here also plus will be there or sometimes here also minus, here also minus will be there. So there will be no change in f dash x. That extreme point is called the point of inflection. Now here you can see x is equal to minus 1. Here x is equal to minus 1 is the point of maxima. What is the reason? It is changing from positive to negative. From bigger one to it is moving down to smaller plus to minus. So x is equal to minus 1. This point is the point of maxima and f of minus 1 the function value f of minus 1 that particular value of x you have to put it in the function and what do you get? We are getting as 5. So that 5 is the maximum value. Remember if x is equal to minus 1 is the point of maxima and its maximum value maximum value of the function that is just substitute that value in the function and we are getting as 5 that is maximum value. So x is equal to 1 is the point of minima. Why? From negative to positive it is changing. So left side is negative and it is moving towards positive. So because of that x is equal to 1 is the point of minima and f of 1. f of 1 if you put 1 cube minus 3 into 1 plus 3. So it will be coming as 1. So that is the minimum value. Okay, x is equal to 1 is the point of minima and when you put that x is equal to 1 in f of x, that value we are getting that is the minimum value. The point at which the local maxima or local minima occur either f dash x is equal to 0 or function is not differentiable. So the point at which a local maxima or local minima occur either f dash x is equal to 0 or function is not differentiable. Next we shall discuss the second derivative test. Here also the working rule we will discuss along with an example. Step 1 is f dash x is equal to 0. We have to equate the first derivative with 0. Here we get the extreme points say c1, c2 and c3. So consider an example here f of x is 3x power 4 plus 4x cube minus 12x square plus 12. When you take the derivative here 3 into 4 that is 12x cube and here 4 into 3 12x square then 12 into 2 24 into x this is the derivative 12x cube plus 12x square minus 24x and equate it with 0 f dash x is equal to 0 means 12x cube plus 12x square minus 24x equal to 0 in all these three terms there is 12 is common just you can take out 12x 12x going means x square balance here 12x going out means x balance here minus uh, 12 go from going from 24 means 2 balance x also outside then we can split this one by using the factorize this one by using splitting middle term product is minus 2 here product uh, means 1 into minus 2 minus 2 sum is plus 1 the numbers are 2 and minus 1 because product is uh, minus 2 means here 2 into minus 1 2 into minus 1 is minus 2 and the sum is 1 so 2 minus 1 is 1 
we have split at this one 2x minus x this x we split as 2x minus x okay then 12x into in these two there is x is common and x if we take out x plus 2 balance in these two there is a minus sign common then into x plus 2 equal to 0 and here you can check inside the bracket x plus 2 x plus 2 common so we can take out 12x into x plus 2 we have taken common and here x balance that is written here then here entire x plus 2 is out that means only minus 1 balance that is written that means the product means 1 2 3 product of 3 number 0 means each quantity we can equate with 0 12x is equal to 0 that means x is equal to 0 x plus 2 equal to 0 means x is equal to minus 2 x minus 1 is equal to 0 that means x is equal to 1 so we have got three critical points 0 1 and minus 2 first step is over then step 2 f double dash x at x is equal to c1 means f double dash x we have to calculate and we have to substitute c1 in f double dash x then if it is less than 0 means a negative number then c1 is called the point of maxima if it is less than 0 what we have to do f double dash x we have to calculate and you have to substitute c1 for x and you will get an answer which is less than 0 means c1 is the point of maxima and f of c1 is the maximum value then f double dash x at x is equal to c2 means f double dash x you calculate and c2 substitute in, in by replacing x and if you get the answer greater than 0 more than 0 means c2 is called the point of minima means here if you get a positive value then we will tell that c2 is the point of minima less than 0 if you get you will tell that is a point of maxima greater than 0 means you will tell that point is the point of minima and f of c2 is the minimum value and f double dash x at x is equal to c3 equal to 0 if you get what you supposed to do is you have to use the first derivative test just we have discussed in the previous slide so this is what the working rules in step 2 we have to do let's check f double dash x we have to calculate f dash x is this one 12 x cube plus 12 x square minus 24 x so 12 into 3 36 x square it's written then 12 into 2 24 x minus 24 into derivative x is 1 so minus 24 this is f double dash x then in this there is a 12 common we can take balance 3 x square plus 2 x minus 2 then f double dash 0 as before c1 we have to substitute f double dash 0 our first critical point means when you put here it is clear that when you put 0 here this is better to take if you put 0 x here this term will be 0 this term will be 0 only minus for 24 is there means this is less than 0 that means f double dash 1 first you calculate this one less than 0 we have got we will write the conclusion later let it be there then f double dash 1 the second critical point we have taken so when you put 1 here 3 then uh, plus 2 into 1 is 2 3 plus 2 is 5 5 minus 2 is 3 so 12 into 3 is 36 equal to 36 which is greater than 0 what we have done is in f double, double dash x replace x and put to 1 just to do the calculation mentally that's fine here you can check either you can use this one or this one both in the same difficulty level only 36 into 1 plus 24 into 1 minus 24 here plus 24 minus 24 we can cancel 36 is the answer it is greater than 0 then f double dash the third critical point minus 2 we have taken minus 2 if you take and when you put it in f double dash x we are getting the answer as 72 just check it which is greater than 0 so all the three values we have got we will go for writing the conclusion x is equal to 0 is a point of local maxima because f double dash 0 we have got negative less than 0 so if it is less than 0 means that is the point of maxima and f of c1 is the maximum value what is f of c1 just we can calculate f of c1 our c1 is 0 f of 0 if you just put 0 here in f of x and you will get the answer as 12 then x is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus 2 are the points of local minima because both are greater than 0 so here local minima are x is equal to 1 and x is equal to minus 2 then local minimum values means just to take f of x and put 1 just to put 1 in f of x 3 into 1 plus 4 into 1 minus 12 plus 12 
So here we will be getting 3 in, uh, here minus 12 plus 12 can be cancelled 3 plus 4 7 will be getting. Likewise f of minus 2 when you put in f of x replace x and put minus 2 you solve it you will get the answer as minus 20. So here there are two minimum uh, local minimum values that is 7 and minus 20 and one local maximum that is x is equal to 0 and the maximum value is 12. Next we shall discuss the exercise problems. First question from exercise 6.5. Find the maximum and minimum values if any of the following functions given by f of x is equal to 2x minus 1 the whole square plus 3. This question we can solve by using three different methods. The first one is the direct normal method. The second one is by using first derivative test and the second one is by using the second derivative test. Any one of these three we can use to solve this question. Here I am going to use the first derivative test. First of all, let's take the given function as f of x is equal to 2x minus 1 the whole square plus 3. Let's take the derivative f dash x is equal to, so 2 into 2x minus 1. That is, that is the derivative. Again, 2x minus 1 also we have to take the derivative. 2x minus 1 derivative is 2. So for this 2 and this 2 we have to multiply. That is 4 into 2x minus 1 is the derivative f dash x. Then f dash x is equal to 0 if you take. 4 into 2x minus 1 is equal to 0. That means 2x minus 1 will be equal to 0. 2x is equal to minus 1 we can take to the right side. That is plus 1. x is equal to 1 by 2 will be get. Here this portion I am explaining a little faster because these are quite familiar terms for us. And here also derivative. By taking the derivative also you need to go for the mental calculations and make sure that you are doing speedy calculations. Then as before the, we have discussed in the previous slide just represent it this one using a number line roughly. So our critical point or extreme point we have got 1 by 2 only one point we have then let's take one point left of 1 by 2 and just to put it in f dash x. So left of 1 by 2 we know that uh, 0 is left of 1 by 2 when we put it in f dash x you can see here f dash x. If you put uh, x is 0 here we will be getting as 4 into 2 into 0 minus 1. This is here only we are putting. Okay, 4 into 2 into 0 minus 1. That is 2 into 0 is 0 minus 1. 0 minus 1 is minus 1. Minus 1 into 4 is minus 4. So that means that portion is negative. And on the right of 1 by 2, I am taking one point. Easy point is 1. Just to put it. That is 4 into here instead of x, we can put 1. So 2 into 1 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is uh, 1. 1 into 4 is 4. Means clearly it is positive. Means negative to positive. So since the sign of f of f dash x changes from negative to positive, x is equal to 1 by 2 is the minimum. Okay. From negative to positive it is changing. So x is equal to 1 by 2 is the point of minima and f of 1 by 2 we have to calculate that is the minimum value. f of 1 by 2 means just to put uh, f of 1 by 2 here f of x we have to take replace x and put 1 by 2 that we have done here replace x put 1 by 2 2 into 1 by 2 minus 1 the whole square plus 3 then this 2 this 2 we can cancel 1 minus 1 will be getting that is 1 minus 1 is 0 0 square 0 square plus 3 0 square plus 3 is 3 so the minimum value is 3 and since the minimum value is 3 3 is the minimum means of the starting is 3 and it goes endlessly because of that there is no maximum value next we shall discuss the second question f of x is equal to 9x square plus 12x plus 2 so f of x we have taken and we are going to use the first derivative test so a little bit of steps i am reducing here again so uh, first derivative test the first part is the uh, step one is equate f dash x is equal to 0 so here f dash x derivative means we know that 9 into 2 that is 18x plus 12 into derivative of x is 1. So 18x plus 12 is f dash x. So f dash x is equal to 0 means 18x plus 12 is equal to 0. From here 6 we can take common 6 into 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. That means 3x, 6 is a constant it is not possible to equate with 0. So 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. From here 3x is equal to minus 2, x is equal to minus 2 by 3. You can see comparatively the steps are less. When we compare with the previous question, the steps are less. Okay, this is enough. Then just to represent this one on a number line, minus 2 by 3. Minus 2 by 3 just to divide. It is 20 by 3, almost 6. So 0 0.666 it is coming. Recurring decimal. So minus 0 0.666 is coming. Minus 0 0.6. 
just behind that one number if you take that is minus 1 and if you put minus 1 in f dash x 18x plus 12 so uh, 18 into minus 1 plus 12 so minus 18 plus 12 is minus 6 that is negative f dash x is negative in this part and on the right of minus 0 0.6 we can take 1 1 if you put 18 into 1 plus 12 18 into 1 plus 12 is 30 so here all f dash x is positive means f dash x is changing from negative to positive it changes from negative to positive when x is equal to minus 2 by 3 is the point of minima of f of x and then we can calculate the minimum value so minimum value means f of minus 2 by 3 take this x replace this x and put a minus 2 by 3 that means 9 into minus 2 by 3 the whole square plus 12 into minus 2 by 3 plus 2 then here just when you expand it 9 into minus 2 square is 4 3 square is 9 plus 12 into minus 2 by 3 plus 2 here we can go for cancellation 9 and 9 we can cancel this portion is gone and here 3 and 12 we can cancel 4 times then when we do the calculation here 4 then here 4 into minus 2 is minus 8 plus 2 and 4 plus 2 is 6 minus 8 is minus 2 so minus 2 is the minimum value hence the minimum value is minus 2 since the fun function minimum value minus 2 means from minus 2 onwards it's from minus 2 it starts and it goes on so there is no maximum value move on to the third question f of x is equal to minus of x minus 1 the whole square plus 10 so f of x we have taken then f dash x here f dash x we have to calculate or else it will be in you will be in trouble because the function is a little lengthier one so minus of x minus on the whole square if you take this minus 2 into x minus 1 then the derivative of x minus 1 is derivative of x 1 derivative 1 is 0 plus derivative of constant is 0 that is minus 2 into x minus 1 Liquid it with 0 f dash x is equal to 0 if you get minus 2 into x minus 1 is equal to 0 minus 2 can't be 0 that means x minus 1 is 0 that means x is equal to 1 represent it in a number line 1 we have plotted here this is a critical point and the left of 1 I am taking one point that is 0 just to put it in f dash x so minus 2 into 0 minus 1 here x replies and put 0 this here okay minus 2 into 0 minus 1 that is uh, minus 1 will be coming minus 2 into minus 1 is plus 2 plus 2 means it is f dash x is positive and on the right of 1 we have to take another point i am taking 2 put it here in f dash x so minus 2 into 2 minus 1 replace x and put 2 okay minus 2 into 2 minus 1 2 minus 1 is 1 1 into minus 2 is minus 2 that means it is negative so positive to negative it is changing since the sign of f dash x changes from positive to negative means x is equal to 1 this point is the point of maxima it is changing from positive to negative means as per the first derivative test x is equal to 1 is a point of maxima and the maximum value f of x has a maximum value at x is equal to 1 and the maximum value can be calculated by substituting x is equal to 1 in f of x that means f of 1 is equal to minus of 1 minus 1 the whole square plus 10 so 1 minus 1 is 0 0 square is of course 0 plus 10 that is 10 so the maximum value of f of x is 10 since the maximum value is 10 it starts from infinity and the maximum sorry it starts from uh, minus infinity and it reaches up to maximum value 10 that means there is no minimum value of f of x the fourth question f of x is equal to x cube plus 1 so let's find out f dash x first that is x cube derivative is 3x square then putting f dash x is equal to 0 means 3x square is equal to 0 means x square is equal to 0 x also equal to 0 let's represent it in a number line 0 we have taken this is a critical point take a point which is left of 0 that i'm taking as minus 1 if you put minus 1 in uh, f dash x that is 3 into minus 1 the whole square 3 into minus 1 the whole square means uh, positive term because there is a square minus 1 square is plus 1 so 3 into 1 is 3 it is positive so this portion is positive and on the right of 0 i am taking one point that is 1 if you put it here in f dash x 3 into 1 square 3 into 1 square is 3 that is also positive 
and here you can see it is positive on the left of 0, right of 0, zero also positive means the sign of f dash x does not change from left to right so it is called point of inflection okay we have discussed in the first slide while discussing the basics if there is no change from left to right it is called the point of inflection hence there is no minimum or maximum value next we shall discuss question number two find the maximum and minimum values if any of the following functions given by f of x is equal to modulus of x plus 2 minus 1 here this question we are going to do it in a different way not using uh, first derivative or second derivative test so let's take that f of x is equal to modulus of x plus 2 minus 1 and here in this modulus of x plus 2 it is it is a known fact that modulus of x plus x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 0 modulus of x plus 2 is a positive quantity that means greater than or equal to 0 let's write it and what we need is modulus of x plus 2 minus 1. We need a minus 1 here on the left portion of the inequality. So what we can do is just subtract 1 from left and right portion of the inequality. That means modulus of x plus 2 minus 1 greater than or equal to 0. Here also what we have done is subtract at minus 1. What is modulus of x plus 2 minus 1? Here it is there. Modulus of x plus 2 minus 1 is f of x. So let's replace this one by f of x. f of x is greater than or equal to 0 minus 1 is minus 1. So f of x is greater than or equal to minus 1 means the value of the function is more than or equal to minus 1. Means the minimum value is minus 1 from minus 1 and above the value can. So the minimum value of the function is f of x is equal to minus 1. The minimum value is minus 1. And since the value of the function starts from minus 1 and it goes on, there is no maximum value. Next, we shall discuss the second question. f of x is equal to minus mod x plus 1 plus 3. Let's take f of x. The previous concept over here also going to use modulus of x plus 1 is greater than or equal to 0. Here we need a negative sign. What you have to do is just to multiply negative on both the sides of the inequality but there is a problem when you take a negative sign the inequality will reverse let's see when we multiply negative sign on both the sides of the inequality minus of modulus of x plus 1 this greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to and here since it is 0 if you multiply with a minus 1 of course it will be 0 so only thing is that here you need to keep in mind when you take a minus sign the inequality will reverse greater than or equal to becomes less than or equal to now we need a plus 3 additional here so what we have to do is add 3 on both the sides so minus of mod x plus 1 plus 3 less than or equal to here 0 plus 3 what is this one this one is f of x minus of mod x plus 1 plus 3 is f of x replace f of x less than or equal to 3 means 3 or smaller than 3 that is f of x values 3 or smaller than 3 means all values are 3 or below 3. That means 3 is the maximum value. And here the maximum value of f of x is 3. And there is no minimum value here. Next we shall discuss the third question. h of x is equal to sin 2x plus 5. So here h of x is taken and we know that the range of sine function is between minus 1 and 1. So here it is sin 2x is given to us that means minus 1 less than or equal to sin 2x less than or equal to 1. So we need actually sin 2x plus 5. So we can do everywhere just add 5. So minus 1 plus 5 less than or equal to sin 2x plus 5 less than or equal to 1 plus 5. Adding 5. So minus 1 plus 5 less than or equal to sin 2x plus 5 less than or equal to 1 plus 5 we have discussed. So minus 1 plus 5 is 4 less than or equal to sin 2x plus 5 less than or equal to 1 plus 5 is 6. So sin 2x plus 5 is our h of x. So 4 less than or equal to h of x less than or equal to 6. So here not f of x it is h of x. Okay. So you can just write this one as h of x. Then here you can see the value of h of x lies between 4 and 6 that means the between 4 and 6 both inclusive means the minimum value is 4 and the maximum value is 6 so the maximum value of f of x is 6 and the minimum value of f of x is 4 
Next, we shall discuss the fourth question f of x is equal to mod sin 4x plus 3. f of x we have taken. Then, as we know that the sine function is the range of the sine function is between minus 1 and 1. So, minus 1 less than or equal to sin 4x less than or equal to 1. We need sin 4x plus 3. So, everywhere we can add plus 3. That means minus 1 plus 3 less than or equal to sin 4x plus 3 less than or equal to 1 plus 3. We have done. Then, minus 1 plus 3 is 2 less than or equal to sin 4x plus 3 as it is we can keep less than or equal to 1 plus 3 is 4 actually we need mod sin 4x plus 3 what we can do is we can take modulus so taking modulus means here will be coming as mod 2 here will be coming as mod sin 4x plus 3 here will be coming as mod 4 so mod 2 less than or equal to modulus of sin 4x plus 3 less than or equal to modulus of 4 and modulus of 2, of course it is 2, less than or equal to mod sin 4x plus 3 as it is we can keep less than or equal to mod 4 is 4. Then 2 less than or equal to this term mod sin 4x plus 3 is f of x. f of x less than or equal to 4 means the value lies between 2 and 4 both inclusive. So the minimum value is 2 and the maximum value is 4. Hence the maximum value of f of x is 4 and the minimum value of f of x is 2. Move on to the fifth question, h of x is equal to x plus 1 comma x element of open interval minus 1 comma 1. So here as it says open interval means minus 1 comma 1 both we cannot take because it is open interval. So the graph of the function goes like this x plus 1, x plus 1 graph is like this, this format and here you can see h of x have a maximum value of point close to x is equal to 1. So maximum value close to 1 but 1 is not included it is an open interval close to 1 that is a maximum value and the minimum value also same thing minimum value is close to minus 1 but minus 1 is not included because it is open interval so minimum value also the same problem of point close to x is equal to minus 1 we cannot fix a particular point a permanent point there we can only say that close to x is equal to 1 and close to x is equal to minus 1 means it is not possible to locate the such points like close to okay, such points it is not possible to locate because of that the given function has neither the maximum value nor the minimum value dear students today we have discussed the concept of maxima and minima first derivative test and also the second derivative test and also we have solved some problems from exercise 6.5 go through the portions which we have discussed and if you have any doubt, note it and keep. We will discuss it during the discussion session. Thank you for watching.